Imagine three seconds on the clock. Kobe with the ball in his hands. But who's guarding him? Every legend that seems unstoppable has an antagonist that gets paid to try to stop him. But the result always feels inevitable. But this didn't always happen. In fact, every Hall of Fame scorer had a Hall of Fame defender ready to take the credit or take the blame for defending the final shot. MJ had Joe Dumars. LeBron has Kawhi Leonard. Michael Scott had Toby from HR. And Kobe Bryant had Ruben Patterson? Of the names I just listed off, it's pretty clear that one of these men is not like the others. Oh, and we're not talking about the fictional character either. No disrespect to Ruben Patterson, but those dudes belong in a different category. Besides, if you're one of our younger viewers, you might be thinking, who the heck is Ruben Patterson? Well, according to Sean Kemp and Basketball Reference, Patterson is the one and only Kobe stopper. We all know there really is no such thing as a true Kobe stopper, but there was one man who didn't ask for that nickname and actually made Kobe's life noticeably harder. And he wasn't even a shooting guard. He was a nine-time All-Star, Defensive Player of the Year, and like Patterson, was once a Laker. This is the story of one man who claimed to be the Kobe stopper and another who truly deserved that title. Reuben Patterson was drafted by the Lakers in 1998, just two years after Kobe arrived. As a rookie, Patterson got consistent playing time and practice matching up with one of the best offensive players the league has ever seen. And Patterson claimed that he frequently won these matchups, saying he regularly shut down Froby. You might be thinking, well, this is just practice. Kobe in a game is a whole different animal. But we know that Kobe didn't exactly take practices lightly. If Patterson's claim was true, it's a pretty impressive feat. It's obviously worth noting the claim might not be true, as non-stars tend to remember their playing days with delusion. Oh, hey there, Ricky Davis. Unfortunately, no one kept stats on how well Kobe shot against Patterson in practice. But we can look at Kobe's numbers when Patterson was moved to Seattle and Portland, where he spent most of his career. After being traded from the Lakers, Patterson and Kobe matched up 23 times, and the Lakers went 9-14 in that stretch. The biggest win for Patterson came on March 6, 2004. He held the Lakers star to a miserable 5 for 23 from the field and only 12 points. The Blazers took home a win but would be brought back to reality eight days later when Kobe's most iconic game against his rival would take place. In the last game of the 2003-04 season, Bryant would hit two three-pointers at the end of regulation and second overtime to give the Lakers the win and first place in the division. He'd finished the game with 37 points and 8 rebounds. Patterson was so impressed with the clutch display, he actually requested Kobe's autographed shoes after the game. He left the arena with Kobe's signature, game-worn sneakers, and the knowledge that one of the best in the world hit not one, but two back-breaking shots over the Kobe stopper. Over 23 games, Patterson would hold Kobe to 29.3 points on 44.4% shooting. Not exactly a very thorough stopper. In fact, it's one point more than Kobe's point average over Patterson's whole career. If Patterson, the anointed lockdown defender, didn't realistically do much, who did play the best defense on Bryant? Perhaps Raja Bell, Kobe's hated rival who frequently jawed back and forth with the Black Mamba. Not really. Bryant averaged 28.8 against him on 44.4% shooting in 28 matchups. How about Bruce Bowen, one of the most feared defenders of the early 2000s? A little better, as Kobe only put up 26.3 on 42.6% in 32 matchups. Tony Allen, the man who Bryant claimed was the best individual defender he ever faced, still gave up 25.5 points per game on 42% shooting. What about Shane Battier? LeBron's handyman lockdown defender held Kobe to 28.6 points per game on 43.3% shooting in 37 games. Maybe it was Jelly Bean Jr. himself, who sometimes shot in volume while in funks, often resulting in nights where he would score 20 some odd points, but it took 20 some odd shots to do so. Statistically, however, the biggest name who gave Bryant the most trouble was a man he once suited up with in the finals. 
Gary Payton. The Glove played 28 games against Bryant in a span where the Mamba was lighting up the league to the tune of 24.9 points on 49% shooting. When Bryant encountered Payton, he scored only 20.9 on 42.9% shooting, a steep decrease. Even then, over 20 points on a solid shooting percentage is not really lockdown defense. Sure, there were games when Payton got the better of Bryant, but also games when Bryant lit him up. The moral of the story is that no matter how lengthy, quick, or skilled the defender you are, Kobe and the basketball gods in his tier always get the better of you eventually. As Mark Jackson says, Nevertheless, wherever Ruben Patterson is now, he can take pride in the fact that he's not the only one who got bested by one of the best ever to do it. Just maybe be more careful with the nickname you give yourself. At least Kobe always respected a player's confidence. 